40 years back, the Voyager 2 spacecraft made its intimate approach to Saturn. The Voyager 1 and 2 Saturn meetings occurred nine months apart in November 1980 and August 1981. The two Saturn encounters enhanced our knowledge and modified our understanding of Saturn. The vast, close-range observations delivered high-resolution data far different from the picture built during centuries of Earth-based studies. The first looks at the planet through a telescope inevitably form a memory that sticks in people's minds. Whether you're a backyard spectator or a planetary scientist, Saturn is a stunning world. So guys, do you want to know more about Voyager 2's trip to Saturn and what new things we discovered in space? Stay tuned till the end of the video. What's up guys? Hello and welcome back to the channel. We are back with a new video and this time we have brought Voyager 2 spacecraft's visit to Saturn. So without further delay, let's begin. 40 years ago, NASA scientist Linda Spilker started sleeping at the office. It was her first job out of college, but she wasn't pitching tents because she was overworked and tied to her desk. Instead, she was waiting for a marvelous moment in human history, the first time Voyager 2 would fly by Saturn and its moons, and critically the images it would return to Earth of the unique ringed planet. On August 25th, 1981, the Voyager 2 probe zoomed within 26,000 miles of the ringed planet's cloud tops. The findings made by Voyager 2 and by its twin, Voyager 1, which had flown past Saturn nine months earlier, reshaped scientists' conception of the Saturn system and planted the seed for NASA's Cassini mission, which began orbiting the ringed planet in 2004. NASA officials said, Saturn, like all of the planets the Voyagers visited, was full of exciting discoveries and surprises. Ed Stone, Voyager project scientist at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena, said in a statement, by giving us unprecedented views of the Saturn system, Voyager gave us plenty of reasons to go back for a closer look, she added. Voyager 2's flyby wasn't the first time a spacecraft gave scientists a close-up view of the gas giant and its moons. That privilege goes to its sister spacecraft, Voyager 1, which arrived in the Saturn system on November 12, 1980. But the flyby, which took place on August 26, 1981, gave scientists here on Earth significant observations that stirred with those of Voyager 1 have informed every NASA mission to the Saturn system since. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 launched a few weeks apart in 1977, charged with performing a grand tour of the solar system's big planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The two spacecraft achieved that goal, eyeing all four gaseous worlds up close and also studying 48 of their moons. Voyager 1 flew past Jupiter and Saturn while Voyager 2 had close meetings with all four planets. The Voyager 1 and 2 Saturn encounters occurred nine months remote in November 1980 and August 1981. Currently, Voyager 1 is fleeing the solar system. Although coming back to its journey to Saturn, we got to understand many exotic elements about the planet. While Voyager 2 was behind Saturn, its radio beam infiltrated the upper atmosphere and measured the temperature and density. Minimum temperatures of 82 kelvins, minus 312 degrees Fahrenheit, were found at the 70 millibar level as compared to the surface pressure on Earth that is 1000 millibars. The temperature intensified to 143 kelvins, minus 202 degrees Fahrenheit at the deepest levels probed, about 1200 millibars. Near the North Pole, temperatures were about 10 degrees Celsius, 18 degrees Fahrenheit, colder at 1000 millibars than at mid-latitudes. The Voyagers also found aurora-like ultraviolet emissions of hydrogen at mid-latitudes in the atmosphere and auroras at polar latitudes above 65 degrees. The high-level auroral activity may direct the appearance of complex hydrocarbon molecules that are carried toward the equator. The mid-latitude auroras, which arise only in sunlit regions, remain a puzzle since storms by electrons and ions, known to cause auroras on Earth, occur mainly at high latitudes. Both Voyagers gauged the rotation of Saturn, the length of a day at 10 hours, 39 minutes, 24 seconds. The Voyagers also collected evidence, indicating that the icy 313-mile-wide Saturn moon Enceladus is geologically active, a hypothesis that Cassini spectacularly verified in 2005, with photos of water, ice geysers blowing up from Enceladus's south polar region. Further, Cassini observations have demonstrated that Enceladus likely harbors an ocean of liquid water beneath its icy shell. Astrobiologists regard the moon as one of the solar system's best bets to host alien life. Less virtually active, but perhaps more intellectually bizarre, were the observations collected by Voyager 2 of two of Saturn's moons, Titan and Enceladus. These data would educate both later NASA missions and the scientific search for an alien life. NASA's 2005 Cassini mission performed multiple flybys of the Little Moon and took images of springs erupting from Enceladus's southern polar region. 
Cassini even flew through the geyser's crests, experimenting with what is expected to be water spewing up from the subsurface ocean. The Voyagers also discovered a huge and unusual hexagonal vertex at Saturn's North Pole, and the twin craft made the first up-close remarks of the planet's famous rings. Furthermore, the Voyager mission specified that the atmosphere of Saturn's biggest moon, Titan, is composed mainly of nitrogen, but the spacecraft wasn't able to peek through this thick haze. Voyager 2 revealed that Saturn's rings are anything but bland sheets of material, but rather intricate, detailed, and dynamic structures. On October 6, 1980, when the rocket was still 13 million miles from Saturn, researchers first made out dark streaks in the rings. The streaks didn't circle the planet, but rather glimpsed as they radiated away from it. These spokes were the first of many surprising details in the ring system. Also, talking about the appearance, restrained contrasts and color differences on Saturn could be an outcome of more horizontal mixing or less production of localized colors than in Jupiter's atmosphere. While Voyager 1 saw few markings, Voyager 2's more sensitive cameras saw many. Long-lived ovals, tilted features in east-west shear zones, and others similar to but typically smaller than on Jupiter. But it wasn't just the beautiful images of the photogenic ring system that amazed the scientists. When Voyager 2 reached Saturn in August, it observed starlight from Delta Scorpii as the rings passed in between that background star and the spacecraft. Called an occultation, this filtered view enabled researchers to see even finer details in the rings. In fact, they saw the particles in the rings with a resolution 10 to 20 times better than by just photographing the rings directly. On September 29th, the day after finalizing its observations of Saturn, Voyager 2 flamed its thrusters for a course correction to send it onward to its next target, Uranus. In January 1986, Voyager 2 carried out the first reconnaissance of that planet, its satellite, and its rings. In turn, Voyager 2 picked up a gravity assist at Uranus to send it to its final planetary encounter, exploring Neptune, in August 1989. The Voyagers, meanwhile, remained to explore the dark depths of space, far from the Sun. Voyager 1 entered interstellar space in August 2012, and is currently about 12.6 billion miles from Earth. No other human-made object is that distance from home. Voyager 2, which took a different route through space, is about 10.4 billion miles from Earth. The probe should join Voyager 1 in interstellar space relatively soon, NASA officials have said. It is hoped that Voyager 2 will continue to return data from interstellar space until about 2025. And just in case it may one day be hooked by an alien intelligence, Voyager 2, like its twin, carries a gold-plated record that contains information about its home planets, including recordings of terrestrial sounds, music, and greetings in 55 languages. Scientists thoughtfully included instructions on how to play the record. So we look forward to discovering more stuff in space and maybe someday getting a call from an alien. That's from our side. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Make sure you smash that subscribe button down below to subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell icon beside it to be the first to know when we upload a brand new video. Thank you so much for watching, see you in the next video. Until then, peace.